I just read a comment on my YouTube channel and it said, boy, have I let my YouTube standards drop. I just watched an unboxing of a toaster. There you go. And I want to express my sincere apologies. Mate, it's not you who have let your YouTube standards drop. It's me. I, pro I will never do that again. But do me a favor, don't tell anybody about the kettle. There you go. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. So this is the second time we've put the camper on the back. And now if you look at the uh, proportions of the vehicle, with the roof rack on it, the proportions are suddenly coming right. I'm preparing the camper now so that I can take it to Klarman Automotive where they will be helping me with the electrical installation inside the camper. So this is the aim. The camper will be a live-in, live-out of space with AC current that I can not only run induction cooking and toasters, even a little coffee machine that I bought, but be able to power using the solar panels mounted on top, my studio workshop. Now the studio workshop that I have at this very moment placed an offer on, it's been accepted, and I'm waiting, it's a new house. Gwen and I have put an offer on a new house, and it has this workshop on the property. I'm gonna run it using solar power from this. So I'm gonna be putting more lights on it that I would normally have if I was just going to be using it for camping. When traveling, I can uh, charge all my batteries in the vehicle and in the camper. I can actually sit and do some work. Very comfortable, which it will be. Lighting, now the standard lighting on the, 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 the Tommy isn't, isn't bad, but I, I need to refine it. When you get into an environment with lots and lots of insects, what do you do? Well, you need red lighting as well as white lighting. So you need to have that choice. And of course, I'm installing the, the Red Arc Red Vision, which is far more complicated than anything I've ever done before. And it will allow me to control all of these devices. Whether I will, I mean, normally I would just have switches. I'm going to go to the next level because I want to find out how, I mean, they're popular for a reason. What is that reason? I'm about to find out. Another Red Arc monitor. Um, you can daisy chain these and you can so you can actually run as many as you like and so I will be running two of them one here and one inside and of course you can actually use your phone um, as another control device I've been told that the phone app is a bit tedious it's a bit it's a bit you know when you want light when you want something turned on you want it turned on you necessarily want to fiddle with an app so these are far Let's put it this way. I don't want to have to rely on an app. That I know would drive me nuts. These are Red Arc 120 watt panels. We're going to put three of them on the roof. So I'll have a 360 watt input panels mounted flat on the roof. And it's very important when putting solar power, uh, panels on a flat roof like this that you leave an air gap because when a solar panel gets hot, the current it produces comes down. So you've got to make sure that they don't get too hot and on a very, very hot day, there needs to be air. So in effect, what will this will actually do is it will act like a safari roof, a double layered roof on the top of the camper because these will cast shade on the roof of the camper, which is white as it stands. So these should be very efficient. What you could do mm -hmm. is talk to Rob again. Okay. Mount that somewhere here. Keep it a bit clear so that you can have that and Rob can make the cover so that when you brush past things that it wouldn't hit the light all the time. Because like you said, this is the widest bit and if you go through narrow tracks, sooner or later I'm pretty sure... It's going to get damaged. Yeah. There's, it's just a matter of time. A bit of a concern with the lights inside the camper. There are two lights at the moment. I don't think they're, they're not dimmable, are they? No, they're just bright so, white lights. 
so basically on or off. Yeah. And in the dead of night camping, that's a lot of light, probably too much. So maybe we should leave that one as it is and change that one to one of those, the dimmable red, white hellers, yeah. the round ones. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Or even one that can do orange, depends on what color you prefer. But definitely dimmable and two colors. So you can have a really bright light or you can just have an orange or red light that you can dim right down for the middle of the night. I know I did say that I was going to do a lot of the wiring under Heiner's direction, but they've kind of taken over and I know why. Heiner is a bit of a perfectionist. Actually, that's not fair. He is a perfectionist of note. It's just not fair to other perfectionists. He, he wants to make sure that it is perfect to his standards, not my standards. And let's face it, his standards are higher than mine when it comes to electrics. So I'm kind of letting him do it, but I promise you I will show you the detail. I will show you everything that we're installing this vehicle in quite a lot of detail in the video's head. I've left the camper there. They'll take five to seven days to complete the work. And I filmed a lot of the discussions we had while we were deciding what to put where. But I'm not going to show that now. What I'm going to do is actually going to show you the result and then with flashbacks on some of the conversations and discussions we had on why we did certain things in a certain way. Three cables. Okay, I decided to run them over the roof and down the back and into the cab. I didn't want to drill any extra holes in the cab. I will use existing holes with uh, proper glands and everything, keeping everything waterproof and then run a cable to the engine bay for the lights. I have already wired up the, uh, the light bars to this auxiliary fuse box here and all I have to now do is undo a few cable ties and figure out the last stage but I think this is going to be quick and easy. The camper is not finished but it's almost finished. I'm leaving quick pitch now and I'm going to go and see it. And they have reported to me that it is absolutely, they've seen it, that it is absolutely fantastic. And in fact, they described it as, I cannot reverse out of here, there's somebody right behind me. So, uh, and uh, they were, they are, they are so excited about it. So <laughs> I'm about to go and see it. Yeah, so I've had a camera fitted and it has allowed me to do make this maneuver otherwise without the camera at the back there's no ways I would have been able to do that and then I just go straight over the curb because it's a handful this thing so it's a winter's day in Perth it's been quite cool a lot of rain and the first nice warm day we've had in a couple of weeks actually. Winters in Perth are short, not particularly cold, um, rainy at times. I have arrived at Carmen Automotive Solutions, but... Well, you said to me, I know you can't come in now, you're not, we're not finished. We're not finished. We haven't done the last bit of the vacuum. Come on then, carry on. Sweep up, sweep up, sweep up. Come on, come on. There you go, Andrew. I thought I'd make a little bit of uh, space to walk around here. Get rid of all the excess cabling. So this is all the stuff we didn't install into your car. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we didn't install. Cool, so on the other hand, this is what we did install. It's beautiful. It is a thing of beauty. Thank you. Well, I can tell you four people worked wow. a long time on actually getting it to this. And I think we used pretty much all the space there was. There is one thing that I'm quite pleased about right now. Yeah. You, you, that I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we, I, I would have been, yeah. 
I won't say any more. I'm, I'm glad you did it. It is beautiful. Cool. That was the All quality. Right. We changed a few things around that are a bit different than what we initially thought we would do. For example, you've got your shower controls right there. Okay. I thought it makes a lot more sense to have the shower controls running through that than actually have them on a screen. So that works exactly the way it did in your Troopy. Okay. With the changeover switch and the on off. Perfect. Because I thought, well, if you have a shower there, this will be open anyway. So you put the AC there. Yeah, so there <laughs> is, uh, that is your RCD and your main circuit breaker. And from there, we've got three twin power outlets. One here, one on the inside, and one on the kitchen side. And this here is not your normal socket like you would usually use that. The idea of this is you can, as you can see, there's just a hole in there. So you feed your cable through there. And then you can plug in your charger and just close it again. Or if you want to power your studio, like you said you wanted to do, you would then I don't turn, turn it, it around. Off, but you just turn, turn it, it around. Turn it around. Plug your studio in here. Uh, plug that in there. Turn it on. You can still I close love it and then power your studio. Love the simplicity. Uh, we've also because dust could come in here. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we put a seal in there. I hope that works as a dust seal. Uh, it's a bit of a prototype, so okay. we have well, to see how that we'll works see. for you. We will see. If you get dust in there, we have to upgrade the seal a little bit. Okay. But I think in general. Okay, solar input, excellent. You've got your, uh, the thing with the solar, here's how it works. So that works through the DC-DC charger, the 25 amp, which is there. So whenever you plug in your solar blanket, then the solar blanket will only charge through the BCDC. The roof solar, which is on there, that is connected to the manager. So that on your displays, which are on the other side, you will always see what's coming in directly from there. But uh, we are almost on the brink of uh, the maximum that this can handle. So we said the extra solar is gonna go on here so that you can then still add a 300 watt solar panel if you wanted to and still get full capacity out of that. So then you can have your 360 watt on the roof, plug another 300 there. If you got another 300 watt panel that you can plug in and you get 660 watt solar combined. That's a lot of solar. Yeah, that should keep you charged up. That's uh, close to three times that I've ever had before. Yeah. yeah. I've built a battery box before that I called a Kraftwerk because Kraftwerk means power plant in German. Yes. So in German you would say Kraftwerk. Which there was I a, think there was an a electro lot. band, wasn't there, called yeah, Kraftwerk? Same way. Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. same. And okay. I thought, well, we've superseded the battery box, but I wanted to keep on using this. And my idea now was that whenever we build a system like this, which is a power plant, so to speak, it is. A, it, is. it will get our Kraftwerk label. Because when it is the full build and it is the proper power plant, we will put our Kraftwerk label on Okay, there. can I do a German accent now? If you want. Sehr gut, sehr gut. <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got all your main fuses. As you can see, we've got uh, your battery bank, the house battery bank. Power comes in here. From here, we've got your start battery bank, which will be connected through an Anderson plug on the headboard. And then uh, we've got the manager charge input and the BCDC charger charge input and then here we've got the TVMS that is connected here the management system then we've got the charge input from the DC-DC charger the manager will put his charge back through the TVMS through this fuse to the battery and your water heater is connected here as well plus there's a little bit if you decide to add on. Another cool thing why I like using these channels is if you ever decide, oh, you know what, I just realized that was missing in the plan. We can just open the channels up. All the cables in there are cable tied, so nothing's gonna fall out when you open them up. 
and you just add a cable and you can run from here to the far side just in cable channels. All you need to do is open it up, add a cable, cable tie it to the rest that is in there, close it, connect it where you need to connect it, and you've added a function if you want to. So this is your, this is your kitchen side. Obviously you've got the, uh, the light on top that you can switch to stealth mode if you want to. If you do that, that's not much light on it, that's perfect. Do you want to push it over a little bit towards the prep table and have it right on top of the prep table? But then, if I'm working in the prep table, my head could cause a shadow on it. How about you put it further you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's this side, it's going to blind somebody standing here. If it's up top, it's not going to blind anybody. Yeah. If it's tilted this way a little bit, it's not going to blind anybody. Okay. But if it's too far over here, my shadow of my head is going to be on the prep table. Okay. So if anything, I think center. I actually think center. Okay. And you can dim it and the lock. You've also got your uh, controls here where you can then turn your tap on turn the lights on and off, you see what your battery is doing, all that sort of stuff. And uh, you've got your travel buddy in here, that is also controlled through the uh, TVMS. So really you could prepare whatever you want to do, drive along, connect with Bluetooth to your system and turn the travel buddy on when you're still driving so that when you arrive you can go like, yeah, hot food, nice. Uh, we had to space this out a little bit because when we fitted the screen in there, or tried to, there's not enough space on the back because it interfered with the drawers. So we had to make a little bracket to just bring it that one <laughs> centimeter out so that the uh, connectors went into the back. You also got a 240 volt outlet here running through your inverter. So for induction cooking or whatever you want to do. And you've got another 12 volt accessory outlet up there. I have also switched that through the TVMS so that from the cap, from the inside, from here, you can turn that on and off. You, when you've got an awning, maybe you want to put awning lights in there or you find something that's always find it handy to have a switch power outlet because then you can add whatever you think is right and you've got the functionality of switching it on and off. Am I right in assuming that the 220 or the AC system has to be checked off, signed off by an approved electrician? Yes, we've got a 240 volt uh, electrician that comes in, a contractor. I've known him for a long time and he does all our 240 volt work. The good thing is he does it exactly the way I'd like him to, but uh, he's got the knowledge about what is important for it. And he will also send you a certificate of compliance and he registered the installation with the Board of Electricians or whatever it's called. And he also takes a serial number and with that, you know that you've got a completely compliant 240 volt installation, which is very, very important. You should have that. If you get a 240 volt installation and you haven't got that, it is against the law. Is it just that one edge, Andrew? Just the one edge, yeah, where this hits. Cool, yeah. Okay. You got your this USB works, there? This works very, very well there. Yeah. Fan. Where's the switch on this fan? Uh, top left and right corner, you can press the button. The cruiser and camper are back at my home. I will be showing you a lot more detail of the electrical installation as we actually start using it while camping. I finally have the camper on the vehicle at my house and we're so close to completion that I can now actually start to play with it. I must now make a decision. How do I connect it to the vehicle electrically? So I have this cable to run to the vehicle and it will ultimately run to the start battery and take current from that and take charge current from the alternator. But this is a power station. I can charge the batteries with 55 amps worth of current there. That's the, the, the two units combined. Here I've got another 100 amp battery that I have a 50 amp DC to DC, so up to 50 amps here as well. That is at the, the alternator's capacity is 130 amps. If that battery was flat and those batteries were flat and I turned the engine on and I idled it, I wonder, surely the alternator is going to get extremely hot 
could it burn itself out? So I'm thinking I've got so much stored energy. I mean, I've got 400 amps of, I've never had close to that amount. Do I really need that amount? Not really. For the kind of travel I'm traveling I'm doing, no. So I'm thinking instead of just running a cable to the start battery, I should run it via a battery switch. So I could tell the car, charge that system or charge that system. So this is my solution. That way it charges the auxiliary battery in the vehicle. That way it charges both. That way it charges the camper. And that allows me to isolate both systems from the vehicle. But I am so looking forward to showing you this. It's, it's so good. It's so good. All I, we've got to do now is the plumbing, which is happening next week. And then I'll get a camera out and I'm going to show you every detail. They did a beautiful job. Man, I'm glad I didn't do this. I actually wouldn't have tried. I wouldn't have tried. No, that, that's beyond my capabilities. But it is a flipping masterpiece. In the next video, Gwyn and I are going to get together. We're going to go through all our camping gear and we're going to decide what we're going to take and more importantly, what boxes we're going to use to pack stuff in the camper and in the vehicle. Thank you for watching. See you next week.